brother of Richard, Betty Maurice. I notice you've just given Richard a signal to pit before the green goes back out. What's the strategy here? Well, if, uh, if he'll run four or five more laps, uh, we can make it the rest of the way on this pit stop. You mean you won't have to come back in before the race is over? That's right. And uh, how's the automobile doing? Have you had any problems? No, it's been running real good right now, but it just continues to run good. These are the boys who've won here five times at North Wilkesboro. Maurice Petty says everything's okay. They're going to bring him in and hope to go the distance. You just gave Richard a signal. Gas okay. Does that mean you can go the rest of the way? Uh, we can go the rest of the way without any unforeseen trouble. You've been doing some sliding, I understand, over on the back side. What is this? The track's getting awful slick. You picked a high groove right from the start. Uh, you have any problems with it? Would you have done it any other way? I don't guess so. You're needy. They run a lot better up high. If you get on it too heavy, the back end would break loose, so it's a tough turn to come off of. All right, Ned, we have some word from the pit area from Bob Montgomery. Bob, what's the story? Standing right alongside me is Richard's brother, Maurice. Maurice, it happened so fast, I doubt if you know what happened, but what is Richard's condition, could you tell? Well, he's laying in a pocket now. It looks like he's uh, left on. They see the sprung wheel bladder broke, and they're, getting, they're cutting his uniform away to get into it. His, yeah. head's, his head's beat on bloody, and his eyes hurt a little bit. He'll be all right, though. But he is talking. Yeah, he's talking. He knows everybody. You look pretty beat yourself. Yeah, <laughs> long run. Now back to you. Car. Maurice? Maurice, what happened to Richard? Uh, there's a control box in there. It costs about $125. And it's just a bad piece, and uh, it's running good. It'll be all right till that box quits. So that little box, the ignition box in that car, was with, with the bearded one, Maurice Petty, the brother of Richard. Is everything going as you hoped it would, Maurice? This guy out there, and everybody's trying to jump on him. And uh, when he gets somebody behind him, they just seem to go off and leave the field. Compared to last year, at this point of the race, are you in better shape than you were last year when you won the race? No, we're running along about the same speed as it was last year, and it uh, seems like everybody is, is besides Buddy, and Buddy seems to have everybody outclassed today. Okay, that's a report from Maurice Petty. Yeah, with Maurice Petty, of course, he's the brother of Richard Petty out there. Richard's style over the years has been just hang in there as close as you can and then make a move at the end. Is that sort of the way it's working today, Maurice? Well, we're just sort of hoping we can hang on long enough to be there when the end comes around to have a shot at it, so we'd all got our fingers crossed. What do you talk to Richard about on the radio? Gives him the time. What everybody else is doing, they're cautioning. He tells him there's a caution, what the wreck is. But you don't give him no advice on driving, huh? No, no advice on driving. He does his own stuff. Well, Maurice did a little bit of driving. We're standing by with Maurice Petty, brother of Richard. Maurice, he's out front now. Will he try to stay there or will he try to drop back and try to slingshot on the last lap? No, we're going to try to stay out front all the way. If they get by us, it'll be because they're just flat out running. That's the way it is here in the Petty Pit, Tim. Time and lap. Morris Petty, one of the brothers of the Petty clan. Kyle appears to be where he wants to be. Does he have anything left? He can run real good, but uh, they're doing a lot of jockeying around out there. When they pull out, they get side and side. Nobody wants to pull out because they're going to lose the draft. So uh, I'm sure that uh, Fort's uh, reading the race, but he'll not win the race. A few laps to go. Kyle did almost lose the draft. He almost got behind. Was there any response from him in the car? Uh, he said the car was running real good if he gets get out by himself. Petty still lives just across the road, still an officer in Petty Enterprises. But he is out of the fabricating shops, out of the engine room. That's part of another lifetime. He now manages a country rock band, Slewfoot, that thunders through the Carolina nights, and daily he ponders the changes. I don't think it'll ever be the same again because, like I say, with Kyle coming in, that's a whole new generation. Me and Richard, we got along together. We had our differences and we had our problems. And, but with two of us, we could always work it out, and then you start throwing two and three and four and five people in there, then, you know, it's hard to work out. And... Uh, Instead of having, like I say, instead of having our differences, uh, I just stepped aside and see what After happened. all, racing is a petty way of life. But still, come Saturday night, Maurice admits he'll be a little bit nervous. I've not gotten my adrenaline up because, of, you know, we're just out here practicing. It ain't like that I had never been around around when Kyle started and around when Richard started and Lee, you know, he had drove. So it's, I'm not really that pumped up right now, but I guarantee you when they throw the green flag, I'll be pumped up. <laughs> Or maybe that your family thinks is special. Well, I only, the only thing I can say that I've not only built a lot of engines for Richard Wynn, but we had other drivers that drove for us, and they won. And uh, I've built a lot of the late models 
sportsmen and stocks and drag races and motors and you know I, I, and boat motors I, I built a little of everything and I've enjoyed doing that all my life and I think that's one of the things that, that Richard every time I've seen him and talking about your induction it's how many races you won with other people and I think seven different manufacturers you won races with seven different manufacturers and the engines were all different back then they're not the same uh, like today they're they're very similar. Well, you, you better believe things are different because we worked out of a junkyard in many, a, many <laughs> a year. And I do remember one thing that, that I ran across that really uh, made me sort of feel good was that when NASCAR said you had to go to the 355 small engine, we, uh, they said you had, and uh, we've been running them old Hemi's and and the big block uh, Chrysler motors. But uh, uh, they had a uh, series, Trans Am series, and they built uh, motors for it, for the, uh, well, I forget what it is, like the tour. But anyway, and they put special emphasis on the motors, and it was what they called a TA, TA block, and, and they didn't have no more of them. And so if you got one of them, you got one of the good blocks and one of the good rods in it. And so we scarfed the junkyards all over the United States looking for them, and luckily we found a bunch. All right. Questions that uh, folks from the chief favorite racetrack? Remember where you're sitting. <laughs> uh, they wouldn't Charlotte. <laughs> I'd have to say Daytona because uh, we won quite a few of them down there, and. Martinsville, Wilkesburg, the short tracks, big tracks, I mean, you know, heck, uh, a lot of people ask that question, which was your favorite race? A win is your favorite race. The last race that you won, that's your favorite race. And look forward to the next one.